now that I've been shown a glimpse of it, now I now that I know what it's like to exist in a bigger body and, and be loved on, I'm going to take that and run. Terrible. If Terrible advice, dude. I mean, it, it, you should find somebody that cares about you enough to tell you the truth. If you're with somebody and they're never going to tell you the truth, that's not somebody that loves you. That's just somebody enabling you. That's terrible. If you're having issues as a plus size girly, why are you still a plus size girly? Like if you deduced, if you used your deductive abilities and came to the conclusion that being fat is like the thing holding you back from relationships or like men liking you or something like that, at least that's what I'm getting. Why are you fat then? Navigating dating and being a big girl is probably like top five hardest things i've had to do in my life like top five it's one of the most interesting experiences dating as a big girl plus size big fat like none of it why don't you just like not be fat then isn't this an option for you i can't believe these people are just like totally willing to just go yeah my life has just been really hard because i'm fat and i just deal with all these problems and it's just like the hardest thing ever and then i hear that and i go but like you don't have to though right you don't have to be fat it's not like you can't lose weight it's not impossible for you to lose weight it's actually quite possible for you to lose weight but i mean all right it's easier to complain i suppose it bothers me personally i'm sorry if i offend you so the amount of guys who are so attracted to me like just in general like it's just different it's a different experience i don't even want to really explain it if you're a big girl then you know ciao i I'm out here getting money. <laughs> okay. That's all I got. Chasing my dreams, <laughs> saving my money, chasing my bag. Okay. That's all I got time for. Okay. I think we all should just like slow, slow you rolling these men. Cause what are we talking about right now? Are we like saying something like, oh, men, like men are trash. Therefore just like, don't worry about men because chase the bags, sis, queen slay edges. Okay. What are, you, what are we talking about right now? Why is this even relevant? You're having a hard time getting men because you're a fat girl and then you pull up the solution of but I'm chasing the bag, but I'm getting money, but I'm, I'm doing what I need to do in order to get my career on track. I don't need these men, even though these men don't want to date me at all. So I don't even need these guys. Is that what we're saying? Is that like the whole point of this video? Focus on yourself. This video okay. is for the plus size girlies. I've just had some thoughts that I wanted to get off my chest. So I have always... Size. I don't know what it's like to walk and feel air between my thighs. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> farting? <laughs> I'm sorry. That was just a bad way of saying that, dude. I've never, I've never known what it's like to be walking and have air between my thighs. That is a crazy statement, dude. I'm sorry. In no circumstance have I ever heard somebody say those words together and not thought of somebody queefing or farting. Am, am I wrong in saying that, dude? What are you talking about? You never busted some a solid ass between your legs? What are you saying right now? I know, I know she's talking about a thigh gap. And having a thigh gap is super cool nowadays, right? And it's like really cool also to have a really big camel toe, apparently. I didn't know that. I thought for a long, cause like I watch these TikToks, right? Not not purposefully. I'm doing it for like recre, not for like recreational purpose, but but for professional, right? And I'm watching these TikToks and I see these women, just like out of nowhere, right? They'll just come into frame and they just have the meanest camel toe I've ever seen in my life, like this. They got one of these, right? And I'm just looking at that, like, damn, what the fuck? And then everybody in the comment section, like, damn, that girl got a camel toe. Everybody's commenting on it. And then she'll make a response video like, oh, I can't believe that these guys are talking about something I, I have no control over, right? But then I look at the rest of her content. It's all the same shit. Like, she's in the gym with her vagina lips hanging out. And I'm just thinking, what are you talking about? What are you, like, that'd be like the equivalent of, like, a guy or, like, me walking outside in, like, basketball shorts and my nutsack just hanging out the side of my leg and going, why are you looking at that? Why are you, why are you looking at my big ass swinging nuts? Like, I get it. I got a big meaty man meat, but you shouldn't be looking upon that. Stop objectifying me. And it's okay to feel like men are objectifying you or people are objectifying you. Um, but don't be like Ariana Grande where you're sitting there going, I don't make songs for men. Men need to stop objectifying me. This is ridiculous. And then, then make songs about how you're an object and that you want to have sex with people and stuff like that. 
Like, it's just, like, you know, it comes off a little bit disingenuous and things like that. I don't think women are in, in, in objects in general. But sometimes we all want to be objectified, right? Like, it's okay to use me sometimes. Not you, personally. I'm saying that if you're in a relationship with somebody, it's okay to use that person sexually um, because everybody wants to be used, you know? Anyway. Relationship with men has never been um, smooth in a romantic kind of capacity. I gotta go back. I'm sorry. My relationship with men has never been um, smooth in a romantic kind of capacity. That's because of how I perceive myself, how others perceive me, just my size and my body. If you're a plus size girly, like you get it. I don't need to explain because this video is not about that. I am currently in a relationship where I'm very comfortable. If you're having issues as a plus size girly, why are you still a plus size girly? Like if you deduced, if you used your deductive abilities and came to the conclusion that being fat is like the thing holding you back from relationships or like men liking you or something like that, at least that's what I'm getting. Why are you fat then? Like if you're dealing, that's like somebody, that's like going to, that's like going to a mechanic and the mechanic's like, yeah, you're going to need to get your oil changed. Like your oil is thick. Like I can probably put this down on the ground and it would be like concrete. That's how thick it is. And you go, just leave it. Just leave it, dude. Oh, it's going to be cheap. It's, you'll do it for free because it's actually a hazard for me to drive this on the road. No, don't do that for me. I don't want that. What are we talking about? Why would you not want that? With my body, it's almost laughable at how much I would try to prove that I would change in order for them to stay. I'll tell you what I used to do. It's I okay to change depending on what they want you to do in order to change. Like if somebody's asking you to change the very idea of who you are as a person, then probably not. But don't make it seem like all change is bad change because definitely some people have some very, very terrible, disgusting traits and if you get into a relationship with somebody and that person goes, I'm not trying to be with somebody that's very toxic. I'm not trying to be with somebody that constantly wants to argue. I'm not trying to be with somebody that's overweight, that has all these issues and all these problems with their weight, right? Then it's not necessarily a bad thing. But I understand why a lot of people might consider that to be a bad thing because our modern definitions of what relationships are is incredibly flawed. For some reason, people think that people shouldn't have boundaries or like hard stop points like I remember I was talking to this one girl and she was like oh I'm gonna go to the club with the girls and I was like oh okay um but I'm not really interested in that like I'm not really interested in you going to clubs you know consistently with people girls and things like that and then she was like why like that's that shouldn't be an issue like I'm a grown woman and I'm like I know I, I know you're a grown woman, but like if you're if we're about to do this and like there's going to be some obvious things that I don't like and you don't like and I'm willing to compromise with you like I'm willing to do stuff for you. This is just one of those things that I'm not comfortable with that you do and I'm going to have to ask you to not do that. If not, that's fine, but I'm just not going to have to be here and we just stop talking because like uh, for some reason a lot of people now don't get me wrong. It's fine if you don't want to abide by somebody's rules. You don't have to do that. But I think it's quite ignorant to assume that when you get into a relationship with somebody, that person is going to obviously have some say or going to voice some opinions on what what they don't like or what they don't want you to be doing in that relationship. There's always going to be boundaries, right? Like, for instance, I don't want you sucking off a random guy. What is this on my, my hoodie right here? What is that? It's not dirt. It's just dust or something like that. Maybe it is dirt. I don't know. But... It's very, very weird to me how people will sit there and go, he's trying to change me or this person's trying to like change that. Most of the time, it's really not even that. Like most of the time, it's just like sometimes people have really, really bad traits and you need to get rid of those or it's going to be a detriment for a countless amount of relationships. How many times have you met somebody that's just extremely toxic? Like somebody that's just trying to argue with you consistently about sometimes even nothing at all. And you're just sitting there and you're going, this isn't worth it. I'm not trying to be in a relationship with somebody that's constantly in a bad mood, constantly trying to start problems with me. I'm just not for it. And now you might consider that to be like, that person is who they are and you should just accept them for who they are. Fuck you. I'm not being with somebody that's good. I'm not trying to be around somebody. That's just incredibly depressing for me. And I think for most people, it's also going to be depressing for them as well. So if you are in a relationship with somebody and your boyfriend, girlfriend, or whoever is telling you that being overweight is obviously a negative thing. And your response to that is I shouldn't change for you. I mean, you can have that mentality, but there's nothing wrong with change, especially if it's in a positive direction. I don't have the correct brushes with me can't be asked what i used to do i used to um 
when I'd be talking to a guy and some time has passed, I would somehow, some way, find a picture of like my ideal, like dream goal body and slip that into conversation and be like, oh, this is going to be me in six months. Hee hee ha ha. If Why? you're like talking about gym or whatever, I'd show a picture of a body that wasn't mine and be like, this is what I'm working towards, by the way. And, okay, hold on. I'm going to predict. I haven't watched this video yet. I'm going to predict. It's either one of two things. It's either the guy's going to go, no, babe, what are you talking about? You're perfect exactly the way you are. You don't need to go to the gym. You don't need to lose weight. You're fine. You're good the way that you are. Or it's going to be because like it's a lose-lose regardless. This is a shit test. This is a 100% a shit test. It's a lose-lose regardless. It's either you're going to tell me that I don't need to change and then I'm going to think that you think that I'm lazy because I don't need to change. How fucking dare you think that I don't need to go to the gym? Like that's wrong of you for me to not want change. Or it could be um oh yeah no totally that'd be great like if you went to the gym and you lost a little bit of weight oh you look so much better it's a lose lose regardless because in that scenario you're gonna go so you think i'm fucking ugly so you think i'm fucking horrendous what you think i'm shrek you think i'm gross looking you think i look like mike myers so let me stop mike myers looks very attractive right especially during the 90s early 2000s mike myers was looking real good but it's a lose-lose regardless like you're not gonna win in this scenario that's what i'm predicting i'm predicting it's gonna be that one though which is yeah, you should go to the gym. You should lose weight. Oh my God, you look so much better. She's going to interpret that as no, that is gross that you think I should change. And looking back, I think that was my way of saying, um, hey, thanks for thanks for being with me, but just give me some time okay. and you'll get to experience the, the better version of me, the best version of me, which in my mind was a slimmer and thus prettier version of can we just stop with this like it's it's most definitely what it is if you are overweight or obese and you are looking at what you could be looking like when you lose weight you're most definitely going to be more attractive just because off the baseline your body is going to be more bodied if that makes any sense when you are fat you have so many things about you that nobody can really identify like nobody knows what your bone structure is you look like every other fat person your face inflates right you have all this extra you got full-on moon face right the amount of people that i know that are massive people and they have these giant oval faces dude it's not attractive nobody wants to not have a jawline nobody wants to have your neck and your chin become one thing that's not attractive okay in the same way that having nice chiseled bone structure right having shoulders that you can identify and knowing where boobs start and boobs stop and this goes for men and women right having the ability to outline, oh, look, that's a kneecap. Oh, wait, is that a kneecap? What is that? Is, is that a kneecap or is that just a jellyfish? You don't know. You know, a lot of times it's very difficult. So 100%, organically speaking, generally speaking, you are more attractive while you're thinner simply because thinner indicates health. And most, time, most of the time, people will associate being healthier with being more attractive because you can identify more traits on somebody. What I am now. Doing that was my way of saying... Hey, by the way, I'm not going to stay like this forever. So just, you know, level up. We... Mind you, I ain't lost a single pound in a good decade. Uh, whew, a bit, uh, <laughs> that's a false advertisement. Then if you're hitting me with a, yeah, I know I'll look musty right now, but in like six months, I'm going to, even though I've never really lost weight in 10 years in six months, I'm going to look good. Oh, yeah, I'm going to look so good. I'm going to look so flavored up. You're going to see my rib cage. Six months comes by, you only get bigger. I don't know how long you think, how long you think that other person could tolerate that? <laughs> While existing in my body, I never gave it the respect that it deserved. It felt like I was slacking home. Most of the time, these people are like, <laughs> what's that? what's that saying when somebody says something? And they know it to be true themselves, but they just kind of ignore it, if that makes any sense. Like, they'll they'll say something, uh, something slip, like a Freudian slip or something like that. They'll say something that they know is true, but they'll never execute because they've convinced themselves that it's not the truth, if that makes any sense. Like, they gaslight themselves into believing something when they know, obviously, it's not. Like, if you're sitting here going, I know I'd be prettier. I know I'd be more attractive. I know people would find me more attractive. I know I'd get more boyfriends or whatever you're looking for if I was thinner. But... I'm going to respect the body I have right now. You can still respect the body you have right now whilst losing weight. Any, if anything, that is respecting your body more because you're actually putting yourself through trials and tribulations to get yourself to the point where you know, you actually know this. You're, you're telling us 
you will be more attractive. And there's nothing wrong with coming to that conclusion. You're good. It's fine. Okay? Stop looking at yourself right now as, like, the be-all, end-all. Because, like, that's what I'm looking at. That's what you're saying, basically. Is like, I never respected my body. So, therefore, I'm going to stay in this body. That's dumb. You can still lose weight while respecting your body. When the whole time she's been the one holding me down. I yeah, that's... But, like... <laughs> Because it has no choice. Like, you don't have a choice. Like, it is what it is. It's either you lose weight or you just stay the way that you are or gain weight, I suppose. But if you're sitting like, oh, yeah, like, I got to respect my body because it, it's it's doing what it do. It's like, yeah, that's the because you have no other fucking choice. It's either that or, like, nothing. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, you, you can... Res <laughs> that's like respecting an abusive mother. Like, sure, it's your mother. Like, sure... It's the person that's, that gave you life and to a certain degree is feeding you and all this other stuff. But you can also acknowledge all the terribleness that's going down with that particular person or in this case, your body. Like you can say my body is here and it's like facilitating all these beautifulnesses of me being able to walk and execute and be able to go through life and stuff like that. Whilst also acknowledging the traumas and terribleness of joint pains, ankle problems, high blood pressure, all this stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Not being able to get boyfriends, for instance. So... It's like in the same breath, dude, like you can have a very abusive parent and that person could be beautiful in the sense of like they put you into this life and they gave you life, but they're shit people, if that makes any fucking sense. Like, I feel like that's the way you probably should want to look at it. I wouldn't say respect, just acknowledgement. I was slacking her off when the whole time she's been the one holding me down. I've now gone from being in a situation where like lights off, um, I'm wearing a bra 24-7, um, wearing bike clothes all the time, being in a situation where I'm sharing showers with someone. Oof. I'm... I don't like it. I don't like sharing showers with people. Like, I'm not trying to have sex in the shower. I know a lot of people like having sex in the shower. I don't like it personally. I've tried to do it a few times. I don't like it, dude. For one, this is like my holy time. This is like my time of not beating off. I know a lot of people think that dudes beat off in the shower. I've never met a single man that has ever beaten off in the shower. I'm sure it's happened a few times. I've tried it once or twice unsuccessfully. Um, I went in with erect penis and like within two minutes, I was like, I don't know. I was like in a mellowed state where I've lost it. It was gone, right? Like if my, it, I just, it, it dissipated under the, the warm temperature of the water, just cascading off my body. And when I'm in the shower, my brain just shuts off. Like I just tend to just let just sit there and let the water hit my head. I like disassociate if that makes any sense. I just like, it's a nice mellow place for me. So I've had a few times where a girl was like, let's fucking do it in the shower. Let's, you know, let's do it in the shower. Like I'll suck you off in the shower. And I was just thinking like in the shower, like usually if I'm trying, if we're trying to get, if I'm trying to get into a position where I'm trying to be disgusting to you, a shower is really not the place to execute that particular, that, 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 that type of thing, because it's a shower. It's a place of cleanliness. Like I know the end result is I'm getting out and I'm be like Mr. Clean or something like that. You know what I'm talking about? So I'm trying to be disgusting to you. I'm trying to be on the verge of like septic tank type shit, right? And you are going to be clean. That's gross to me. And also, like I said, I want my own personal time. It's like somebody eating off your plate. Like, why didn't you get your own shit? Why are you touching my food right now? I don't like it personally. This is just me. Same thing when I go to sleep. Like, when I go to sleep and I've slept with women, not like that, not like sexual. I mean, I have, but not like that. I don't like it. Don't touch me. You know, like, let me go to bed. Let me sleep. Let, don't touch me. You got your side. I got my side. Leave me alone, right? That's just what it is for me personally. When I sleep, when I sleep, I, I like my own space on certain things, right? But I'm, I'm, I'll cuddle you for like 10 minutes, like 10 minutes, okay? Until my hand goes asleep. And then I'm, I'm rolling over, dude. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. And I feel like that's not too, I feel like that's not too far-fetched, right? Anyway, I see what she's saying, though. It's, uh, if you've gone from a position where, because I know for a long time I didn't like taking off my shirt when I had sex, and I still don't like taking off my socks, and shoes, um, but it's, you know, obviously I got to take off my shoes if I'm taking off my pants and things like that. I don't know, anyway, I don't even know what we're talking about. In a situation where I'm sharing showers with someone. Gross. I'm not wearing my bra all the time. Not Letting them hang, dude. I never thought Damn. I'd even get to Not wearing a bra at all? Somebody told me that there's like a, a, so like I don't wear bras naturally. So I met a lot of people that told me that bras is like counterproductive. Like, the process of a bra is to like support your boobs, but in the process of supporting your boobs, you're making them unsupported by their own natural strength because they're being supported by something that's not naturally strengthening them. So the idea of a boob, the idea of a bra holding up your boobs is actually counterproductive, but I'm not a woman, so I don't know. 
and I don't really even understand what bras even do. So can somebody please let me know if you're a woman or you have some like very, very deep knowledge about the enhancement of the areola ish the areola issues? At this point, I don't care about my dark inner thighs anymore. That was a really big thing for me. Not... You know, these people will say stuff like this, and then I always think, you know, you you never had to, right? Like if you just came to the to it's one thing if you were born without legs and it was like very difficult or maybe you had legs and then you lost them at some point or something like that. And it's one thing to acknowledge that this is just how life is going to be from now on. Like, it is what it is. What the fuck can you do about it type shit? It is what it is, right? It's one thing to acknowledge that, accept it, and move on. But when it comes to things like, I have no thigh gap. I, I'm 400 fucking pounds. I have dark dark areas, which is hyper, hyperpigmentation. I don't know where you might get that. If you're a big girl, I don't fucking know. Is it really the chafing? I don't fucking know. If you're telling me that all of that could be alleviated or avoided if you weren't fat, and then you're just going to go, but I've, I've just accepted myself. You don't have to. You know what I'm saying? You could have just easily lost weight, or you could still lose weight now. And sure, maybe the dark tissues between your leg, uh, maybe those don't go away, sure. But like, you're cutting your losses. You're literally eliminating so much of the issues that you're going through right now with just a... A quick snap of the finger, not a quick snap of the fingers, but you understand, like you're losing the weight and you're not gonna be able, you're not gonna be dealing with a lot of the problems that you're literally talking about dealing with right now. Like what I'm basically hearing is like when you started off this life, your adulthood, you instead of going on the recruit difficulty or like the normal difficulty, you just scrolled down and you click the veteran, you click veteran difficulty, you click the hardest difficulty on your life, and you just decided that you were just gonna live like that. When at any point you could just pull up that start menu and then go to the settings and pull up back on normal difficulty, right? That's what I hear oftentimes when these people talk about their issues while being fat, especially when it comes to being dating. Like if you can't get dudes or you're, you're really insecure about your body while you're fat, why are you still fat? Like if there's something that you can change about it, why wouldn't you change that? Right? I know a lot of guys that have very small penises and they've just accepted the fact that they have small penises and there's nothing they can change about that. I mean, most guys in general don't even really even need the amount of the, the amount of meat that, for instance, I have, for instance, right? I mean, it's always better to have more meat than less meat because you can do the same thing that you could do with the small meat with the with the bigger meat, right? But realistically speaking here, vaginas are only like five inches, right? But it's the aesthetic of walking into a room and having your shit like swing across your legs, slapping against your kneecaps or whatever, inducing scoliosis on your knees or something like that. But um, I don't even know what we're talking about. The point I'm making is if you can change yourself and it's for the benefit and you know you can do it, why wouldn't you do that? Being able to like sit freely and <laughs> do certain things freely. The one what the I fuck are you talking about? Like farting? What do you mean? Sitting down and doing things freely? What is she talking about? Is she talking about like beating off in front of a guy? <laughs> what? Can somebody let me know what she meant by that? <laughs> do certain things freely. Like the farting. 180 is crazy. I now get to experience my body as a as a body. Not something that I. Feel is she talking about beating off? Am, am I not hearing this correctly? Like, is that not beating off? Am, am I missing something, dude? Is she talking about, like, beating off in front of people? It was holding me back. This doesn't have to be your story if you're plus size, by the way. Just yeah, it doesn't have to be your story if you're plus size in general. You don't have to be plus size. What the fuck? What are you talking can't about? I be with someone who makes me feel like I need to look like the opposite of me in order to be loved. If you're with somebody... Okay, I'm sick of this. I, I'm sick of this, by the way. I hate I hate having to keep rehashing this shit. If you're with somebody and that individual doesn't have a problem with you being fat, you're not you're not in a good relationship. You're not. I'm going to let you know right now. Now, I understand the idea of being in a circumstance where you just don't want to talk to somebody about that particular problem because it's more effort and maybe it starts problems and you have now you got an argument on your hands and it just is worse, right? And maybe that even ends in a breakup because oftentimes people are caught in their ways and they go, I'm not changing. I'm not doing this. I know it's bad, but fuck you. Things happen. I understand. It's complicated. I've been in a long, I've been in long-term relationships, right? So I understand that uh, when you're in situations like this, it is just easier to have that other person just just be passive and don't even bring it up in the back of your head or even like in that moment you're going this bitch is big as fuck she needs to lose some weight but then you go but i don't want to say it like i don't want to say it because it's going to start a conflict i understand i've been there but if you keep letting that go 
and you keep letting that happen, and this doesn't even have to be necessarily about weight. It could be anything. If you keep letting that go, it becomes issues. It becomes bigger issues. And suddenly, like, this little small little cut, this little scrape becomes a giant gash. And that giant gash turns into a fucking leg that just fell off. And eventually, there's nothing you could do at that point. You just gotta just amputate it all off at that point. Cut your losses. Move on with your life, right? You don't want that to happen, especially if it's somebody that you really care for. You want to adjust, you want to address these problems ASAP as soon as you possibly can because otherwise they're going to continue to happen. If, it, if it's no problem, it's no problem, right? If there's no problem there, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. A lot of people just don't see it as problems to be fixed or they just are oblivious to the issue that's actually happening right there. A lot of people have drug addictions. A lot of people have problems with finances. A lot of people have problems with weight and you don't know that you have these issues because maybe you had bad parenting. Maybe you grew up in a setting where your mom, your dad, burnt all their money and they have bad finances you just kind of think this is how it's supposed to be in the same way that you know maybe your mom and dad or somebody around you has very bad um eating habits and you just kind of thought this is the way that it should be it's difficult i understand but if you are with somebody okay and they are, they approach you with hey i think that maybe we should be talking about your finances you have you have a lot of student loan debt you've been using credit cards like crazy you, you order uber eats or if somebody comes up to you and goes hey you're gaining a lot of weight you're becoming very unhealthy i think we need to talk about this don't look at it as like a personal attack i know it's very easy to and i know it's very easy to and you know what it actually might be okay to look at it as a personal attack but you should not be looking at that as like a deal breaker type of thing um, hopefully that person that's coming to you is doing it in a very nuanced way and they're approaching it with a sense of like not vile intent because most of the time that's not what somebody's doing, especially if they're in a relationship with you. So hopefully with hindsight, you don't break up with that person at that particular, it's very easy for somebody to go, what the, so you're saying I'm fucking ugly? You think I'm fucking gross? No, I don't think you're gross. I just think that maybe you would be healthier, more attractive. Your life would be more fulfilling if you lost that weight. I don't think it's a flex to be with somebody that's never going to talk to you about actual issues they have with you. And they may not even see those as issues, but I think it's very important that if they are issues, objectively speaking, that you should probably try at most to look at it objectively. Because look, I get it. A lot of guys like fat girls, right? Big belly girls, big belly bitches are in style right now. Cool. But uh, it's not healthy. It's not. I'm sorry. It is what it is. It's not healthy to be 250 and when you're five foot two. And I get it, you're Latina, but I don't care. That don't matter to me. I don't care. You know, when I'm in the gym now, I'm operating from a place of, um, I need to get stronger. I need to lift more. And when I go up a flight of stairs, I don't want to be <laughs> breathing like a dragon. If you are overweight or obese and you're going to the gym without the intention of losing weight, this I don't know, man. I, I don't know what's up with this. Like all these genres of people going to the gym and they are big as fuck and they never they never touch cardio machines or just lifting weights for 45 minutes and that's fine you can build up muscle okay you can build muscle and in the process of building muscle you're making yourself more anabolic and then more muscle means more calories you can eat but this woman is literally talking about it in the sense of like I don't need to lose weight if you're if you're trying to get better at going upstairs without going <sighs> <sighs> like your Stevie from Malcolm in the Middle, then the main goal there should be losing weight so you're not pushing up the stairs double or triple the amount of weight that you're, you're already having on your body. Like exercising in the sense of putting on muscle, yeah, it's going to help you, but you're just still stacking on weight on top of this frame. You already have this problem. Okay, all right, man. Other than, oh shit, I need to lose 50 pounds in Damn. four months. So you don't need to lose it in four months. It could be a year. If it takes you a year, it takes you a year. Don't look at it like that. My true potential. Like you really need to go where you are loved. Just That's, it's just like, sometimes the loving environment that you're in is actually the worst environment, dude. Like sometimes when you're in the Garden of Eden, the snake's still there. And then the, the entire garden could just be the, the snake. Sometimes you're, Sometimes you could be your own snake and you're putting yourself in this loving, caring environment, which is fine, but it just might be the place where you never grow. It might be the place where you're just contempt and things just happen negatively because you think it's okay. It's not, it's not okay. So it's, it's better to grow. And I mean, morally, not outwardly, physically. How you are. And I know that's easier said than done. I remember. It's good advice, but it's like. It's good advice for like most people. They'll they'll listen to this and go, this is totally right. But if you read into it a little bit, 
I think that a lot of people would see that going where you're loved or having an environment where nobody critiques you or says anything bad about you is not necessarily a good thing. If anything, it actually probably is a bad thing because you're never having people that are forcing you or not forcing you, but like encouraging you to be better. Before I was in a relationship and I saw the plus size girlies posting their, um, posting their TikToks and their reels and being in a relationship, just enjoying their relationship. I used to think, wow, that's goals. I think I really underestimated how much seeing other fat women in relationships being really happy changed the way that I thought about myself. When I used to think of... I think it's like very bad to look at other people's relationships and compare and contrast to yours. Sometimes the person that you're with is just not going to be that person that you see on TikTok or other social medias. I think in general, it's not a good thing to compare other people to like the person that you're with, especially exes. I think, personally speaking, if you're in a relationship with somebody and your ex... Sorry, if you're in a... Yeah, if you're in a relationship with somebody and the person that you're with brings up their ex... That's a red flag. Don't bring up your ex around me unless I specifically ask you. If you're going, my ex used to do this and you don't do that, okay, that's fine. I don't know what the fuck you're expecting from me, for instance. I think it's very bad. In the same way that it's also like, well, this guy on TikTok did this for this girl. He bought her an MK. He flew her out. He, he got her a Louis Vuitton or whatever the fuck. I don't know. So... What does that have to do with me? Why do you, why do you looking at that as like something that I would do? It's just different for different people, right? And I think that it's super, super okay to have standards in relationships. Like if you want somebody that makes a lot of money or you want a guy that's tall, or you want a girlfriend with big boobs or whatever the fuck, like you're fine in having those things. But I think that if you're going to a person that you're in a relationship with and you're telling that person, well, this guy makes a lot of money. Well, this guy has like a great career and he he's super educated and you're none of those things. Or, um, you know, this girl has a very snatched waist or this girl has a super nice thigh gap and she makes a lot of money. I think that's incredibly fucking toxic. And I think it's not good in any, any, any scenario at all. These things need to be approached with nuances. If you have somebody that is not making enough money, you need to talk to them about that. You don't go, hey, there's a guy on TikTok that makes way more money than you. Get your shit together. That's fucked up. Don't do that shit. In the same way that if a girl looks better than your girl and you want her to look like that, you don't go, hey, there's this girl on TikTok. She is hot as fuck. I'm literally trying to bubble nut her shit. And uh, you should probably look like that, bitch. Don't, don't do it like that. Just come at, come at it with a little bit more... <laughs> I don't know niceness. Um, no, TikTok uh, in, in general, social media is a fucking it's 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 a double edged sword. People show the best parts of themselves unless you're talking about my social media. By the way, follow me on Instagram and subscribe. We're almost at ten thousand subscribers, so if you can get me to ten thousand subscribers, I'll do a reason. We'll talk about the SERP. We'll talk about why I have SERP behind me. Okay, but. Social media is a double-edged sword, and I think it's incredibly destructive for people under the age of 18 because it puts so much pressure on how people should look and way that people should react and do things and things like that because you're super malleable at younger ages, and you don't understand really how the world is. You're just seeing people post great images about themselves and how they're going on trips and doing all this amazing stuff when behind the scene – the guy has a foot fungus. He has foot fungus on his face. And he's like, I don't know. He's probably having sex with like men behind this woman's back or whatever the fuck. Like people are very flawed individuals. And if don't look at social media as like a, I don't know, a, a place of which you should, you should derive your satisfaction from or like how you should live your life. Because oftentimes you're just seeing like this glamorized image of how people live their lives. When in reality, people are dealing with some terrible, disgusting problems on the daily basis. And that's not something to compare it to because you're just comparing your regular lifestyle to somebody's exaggerated lifestyle when they're living a regular lifestyle just like you, but they're just showing you the exaggerated part to it. So um, this affects everybody, but especially youths. That's why I think that people under age, age, age of 18, maybe even under the age of 20, should probably stay as far away from social media as possible. But I know that's not realistic for a lot of people. Someone loving me romantically. I always imagined like... Um a smaller version of myself physically smaller i have found such joy in um community specifically the plus size community where we are able to have these conversations you're not having these conversations like if you're having these like mad imaginations in the back of your head about how life could be when you're thinner and the way that it could be if you were you know more aesthetically pleasing and you know all this other stuff and then you go but i found other communities where i don't have to think about that anymore this, what I'm hearing basically is like, 
you've indoctrinated yourself into believing that this is the way that it should be, even though in the back of your mind, these things are still there. You understand? Like, it's... <laughs> What I'm actually hearing from you is like you've given up or you've like, I don't know, you've tried to convince yourself that it's not, it's okay to be lit like this. When in reality, you know that it's not. That's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Please, if you are a plus size girly, um, I would just encourage you to surround yourself with imagery that resonates with you. Okay, I'm going to wrap up. It's, it's terrible information. Like, it's okay to... It's okay to look up to people um, as like motivation devices. That's okay. But like if you're surrounding yourself with only groups of people that are just echoing the same shit as you, that's not good because you're never going to grow from that. I think it's like really, really super important to get diverse opinions and see where everybody else is coming from. So that way, if you ever get into a scenario where somebody does challenge you inevitably on your beliefs and where you stand on things, you don't just collapse like a pile of fucking croutons, okay? Like you, you, you at least have something to stand on because somebody eventually is going to challenge you and you want to be challenged because how do you know your beliefs are actually like grounded? How do you know that what you believe is actually truthful? If nobody's ever challenging on that shit, and if you surround yourself in groups of people that tell you it's okay to be fat and you're perfect exactly the way you are, well, then guess what? You believe those things. And then when somebody comes up to you one day and goes, damn, you are fat, you are big, you're going to crumble. You're going to fucking crumble. And this goes for anything in life. Like if you believe something, you don't know why you believe it. You just found some random dude on the internet that said this and he doesn't know why either, but you're taking it at face value and you're going to now adopt these things. That could be okay, but... At least try to figure out why you believe these things. That's what I would suggest. Now, because I've been talking for a long time. And I she has nice hair. I'll give her that. She has nice hair. A little dry on the ends, but it's okay. Talk for like another hour. I'm not saying in order to get to this space, you need to rely on someone else or it's someone else's job to do That's that. That's exactly fact, what you're saying. You're literally saying... Find other people that agree with you. Go to those people and then you'll be good. That's terrible. That's not good. It's not good at all. Almost all of that work has to be done by you. But you I you're saying that, right? You're saying that, but then you're literally telling me you're finding all of these resources through ex like outside sources like your boyfriend your your boyfriend's not encouraging you to lose weight so therefore you don't lose weight. Your fucking community of surrounding yourself with plus size fat people not helping you at all. You're literally telling me you're going to places to find, to, to, to like, I don't know, like soften the blow of what reality actually is. I gave myself too much of a hard time because I'm very aware of all the external factors that make this job extremely difficult. Now that I've been shown a glimpse of it, now, I, now that I know what it's like to exist in a bigger body and and be loved on i'm gonna take that and run terrible terrible advice dude i mean it, it, you should find somebody that cares about you enough to tell you the truth if you're with somebody and they're never going to tell you the truth that's not somebody that loves you that's just somebody enabling you that's terrible you could relate to anything that i was saying i love you and your love body you too it's so so fine and terrible man it's just gross it's like on the surface it's okay. Surface level information, it's okay. I'm sure a lot of people can find value in what she's saying. But the deep down, not even deep down, like if you really go down like a little bit, like a little bit down, you find out, no, it's not good to be around people that are just enabling you, that are just telling you that your body is perfect and you're fine and nothing's wrong with you. Eventually shit's going to go down and you're not going to be able to bounce back because for so long you've convinced yourself and everybody around you has convinced you that there's nothing wrong with you. And you know you know, you've literally said it in this video, there is something wrong, but you're just like trying to coat it with these layers of people that have softened these blows for you, which is terrible. And it sounds cheesy, but when they say you are enough, trust and believe you are enough. Sure, you're enough. <laughs> Again, it's like really good surface level information. You're enough. But you can do more if you want to do more. And I encourage you to do more. If you want to be, you want to have that snatched waist, you want to be hashtag, uh, you know, slay queen edges, or you want to be a muscle mommy or a muscle daddy or whatever the fuck, you want to be big, busty, beautiful, you know, girth, girthy thighs, muscled up, or you want to lose that weight, you should be encouraged to do those things. And I think that you should rely on yourself first and foremost. And also, I don't think it's good at all to surround yourself with people that are just going to yes queen you over and over and over again. And this includes boyfriends, girlfriends. It's not good, okay? It's not a good idea. Have somebody that's actually going to tell you the truth rather than enable you. Um, and 
yeah, it's just wanted to get that off my chest. So. I feel like a lot of people say things that they they wish somebody said to them, but the reality of the situation is that the information that you're saying to these people is not good information. Like people should be tested. People should be people should be tested and people should be tried because otherwise you're never going to have that moment. If you do if you if you're always in an environment where nothing ever happens to you and you're always like comforted and you're always somebody's telling you that you're beautiful and stuff like that eventually is going to happen. Eventually what's going to happen is that you're going to hit a wall and then you're going to hit the lowest point you've ever hit. And then because you've been softened for your whole life, it's like what's basically happening is like you're, uh, uh, you're like somebody's growing like a, a fern in their house, but because the fern has never been able to like go outside and have its, have its body be tested. Or you know what it's like? It's like when you find a squirrel, and a squirrel that was like thrown out of the nest or something like that, whatever squirrels are born. And you pick up that squirrel and you nurture that squirrel, you bring it inside, you domesticate it, and then you go, you know, it's time for you to go outside. And you bring it outside for like two seconds and a hawk come runs down and eats it. That's what you're basically doing to yourself is that you're conditioning yourself to believe that you're perfect. And then eventually, eventually shit will go down. That's just what life is. You're going to hit this end point and you're not going to be able to bounce back because for so long you've been conditioned, you've been domesticating your feelings for so long that you just can't bounce back and that's terrible you should always have the ability to bounce back and that should be like the thing that you rely on the most your ability to bounce back and if nobody's ever told you that being fat is bad or if you're surrounding yourself by people that are just telling you that it's okay to be fat and there's nothing bad about it you are domesticating yourself that is terrible do not do that bye, bye. black screen okay yeah cool I was watching my trash reality TV last night as one does, and I was disturbed by a certain conversation. And more than anything, it really had me grateful for one thing, and that is dating while currently being fat. I always tell girls, don't wait till you lose weight to try to date or find a man. Find him right now. I agree. Then you'll know he's he's in he's in it for life. I agree. I think it's probably really benefit. Oh, she's watching Love is Blind, dude. This guy looks like fucking little Nas X, doesn't he? I haven't got this far in um, Love is Blind. I haven't got this far. So I, I don't, I just saw him in the pods. This guy was literally in the pods and he was talking to some black girl. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just really like girls with fat asses. Like I love, I love bitches with big busty ass cheeks and big lips. Like I love that shit. So like, if you don't got that, let me know. And I'm just thinking like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about right now? What the, the entire purpose of this show is to date somebody that you don't know what they look like. And you're literally going like, so let me know about your lips. Let me know about your busty butt cheeks. You got that good shit that I'm looking for? Let me know right now. And I'm just like, what the fuck, dude? If I was a woman on that show and this dude hit me with that, I'm moving on. Thank you. Next. Dude, what the fuck, man? He's a good looking guy, though, right? I mean, he's a super good looking man. But uh, I don't even know what the fuck we were talking about, man. I think, oh yeah, it's super good. It's super good that when you're fat, you should still be potentially looking for somebody because you're working on yourself. And I mean, you could do that while you're with somebody else. Too many people wait a very. I, the amount of times I talk to people that go like, uh, "Hey, bro, are you dating right now?" And they go, "No, nah, I'm just working on myself." Dude, you told me that shit three years ago. What do you mean you're working on yourself now? You've been working on yourself for like four years at this point, dude. How how much more time do you need to work on yourself before you eventually go out and find somebody to be with? So I would recommend doing it. Especially if you're somebody that tr is trying to be monogamous and find that special somebody. I don't do pointless calories. Yeah. So I will. I don't even count calories. calories. I know you don't. I've never counted calories. Men and women are different. You think so? I feel like you have oh, a great body, funny. AV. Like, what are you talking about? I have a great body because I work hard. Let me just preface True. this. This girl has a banging body. Like, she definitely gives that she spends a lot of time in the gym and she obviously is. I think agree. I agree with like men and women being different. That's a fact. Um, the amount of times I've talked to women and I was like so surprised at where their calories that they should be eating are at in comparison to a lot of men that I know. Because I know guys that are like, you know, big, burly black men. And these dudes can eat, they could throw down like easily 3,000 calories a day and not gain a single pound. But these guys are super active. They work a lot, they go to the gym and they're eating a lot of food in a day, like a lot of food. And then I talked to some girls and they'll go, yeah, um, I was on this deficit and I didn't actually know that the deficit that I was on, I was still gaining weight. So I had to go down, I had to go down, I go down. And I realized like after this like amazing calorie deficit that I was on, realistically, all I need to eat was 
1400 calories or sometimes even 1300 calories and i'm just like oh my god that's crazy and it sucks a lot of camel dicks if you're a girl and you like eating everybody likes eating everybody wants to eat more food and sometimes the food that you really love eating is like ridiculous high ridiculously high in calories but um it's just what it is right i can't make the rules it is what it is like you're gonna have to eat the 1300 calories or whatever it may be so i'm, I'm she's correct like sometimes a lot of guys don't have that understanding of what do you mean like you count calories what do you mean you have to eat 1300 calories what are you talking about like you look fine to me yeah because you're fucking you're not looking at it in that same sense that she counts her calories so she is into you know her nutrition her macro whatever and he said you don't even need to be doing all that like your body's banging regardless and i was like slay king terrible information by the way if you're telling a girl like you don't need to count calories if this she's telling you that this is what she's doing in order to maintain or and build the body that she built and you go you're good exactly the way you are it's always a surface level shit it's always the you look good the way that you are a lot of people will take that and go like oh my god yes period and then like what it actually means is like you want you want me to get fat like that's what you you want me to stop doing what i'm doing which is working for me and has been working for me until ap if you didn't work hard and you still worked out i think you still have a great body you're crazy bro i wouldn't even let you get like out of shape you wouldn't let her get away? <laughs> yeah, but- Yeah, this girl, I'm gonna keep it a buck, okay, dude? I'm not, her hair was bad, okay? Like she had, I don't know if she was at like a lace front or something like that, I have no idea what, what kind of weave or any, I don't know, I don't know anything about that, but she had all her hair like lumped up in the back, dude, and I just did not appreciate it, bro. It was like, oh, it was not good. And may, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, David, you're racist, how am I racist for talking about somebody's hair, okay? First of all, bro. Um, I don't know if she improves it during the season. I know it's very difficult as a black woman myself to do my hair on time and like, you know, grow my hair and stuff like that. I know how difficult I've dated a lot of black women. So it's very, I understand it's very difficult and stuff like that. But if you are about to go on TV and love is blind, especially, I don't know how many times I got to look at these women on these shows and like they, they wear the worst shit and it's always uncanny for me. Like last season, there was this woman. And she was dating this fucking, this really hunk. She was dating this really nice, attractive hunk. And these lip injections were just off-centered. They were bad. Her makeup never fucking matched. She was always wearing, like, terrible stuff. And don't get me wrong. Some of these guys are, like... But the bar is set lower for men. Like, most people don't even care what guys wear. Like, guys can show up in, like... I don't even know, like a Captain America outfit and they'll be fine. Like nobody really looks at it, but women, it's like super hyper emphasized for them to be beautiful and things like that. So, I mean, I guess I'm upholding the beauty standards in a certain way, but dude, oh man, this girl's hair was like all lumped up in the back, dude. I mean, maybe it wasn't her fault, but like, you know, I'm, I'm a super judgmental person. So anyway, like out of shape, you wouldn't let her get away. <laughs> yeah, there was like a big thing that happened with, I think it was like season two or three of love is blind. There was a guy named Cole. And he, ha, ha, I'm telling you guys the drama right now, but there was a season where this guy, basically, he was like, oh, let's go out to eat, babe, let's go out to eat. And she was like, okay, we're gonna go out to eat. But she was acting like a bitch for the entire show, right? She was a fucking cunt for the entire show. And I don't say that lightly. And um, he was like, let's go out to eat. And she was like, okay. And then she started eating like an orange or a clementine or something like that. And he's like, oh, um, you shouldn't eat that because we're about to go out to eat in like literally 20 minutes. You're gonna like spoil your appetite because I got this whole thing planned out for us. And she said that he was body <laughs> he said that she said that she that he was body shaming her and that he was fat shaming her. And like, you know what's crazy too is like when I was watching this show, all of the women, even some of the guys, were sitting there going, like, I can't fucking believe that you did that. I can't believe you told her that. And I'm just thinking, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, this guy is like, what are you going to go on to eat in 20 minutes and you're eating fucking food? He didn't even say, stop eating that shit. Stop eating. If he said that, if he's like, stop eating that, you fat ass bitch. I would be like, okay, then obviously this is some like body shame and shit, whatever, right? But he didn't say that. He just said, hey, we're going out to eat in like 20 minutes. Um, I don't think you should be eating that because we're, you're going to spoil your appetite. What the fuck was he supposed to say? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you know what's really crazy to me is like people nowadays will take the most general statement and they'll take that statement and they'll go this is malicious this is gross this is absolutely atrocious right and i kind of understood it from the girls perspective because it was like girls supporting girls but some of the guys were like i don't know like they were like oh my god cole i can't believe you said that and i'm like what the fuck are you talking about right now i'm sorry you're in a relationship with somebody that you're just like getting walked on over over perpetually but some of us are gonna say some shit like in return like he didn't even say anything crazy 
I don't know, man. It's just like, sometimes I hear people talk and I'm just like, dude, you guys are fucking bitches. Like, this is fucking crazy. Are you never had a conversation with anybody that didn't agree with you? Like, are you fucking crazy? I don't know. Anyway, dude. Yes, if, if you're in a relationship with somebody and that person doesn't like being with somebody that's fat and they go, I wouldn't let you become fat, meaning I would let you know before you hit the point of fatness to correct the course of action that I feel like is incorrect. Why is that crazy to say? It's not crazy to say. It's not. Most of the time, people that are in relationships have a preference on the way that you should look. And here's the thing. I understand. When you get older, things happen. Things change, right? But if we're talking about the natural effects of aging compared to gaining weight because you eat too much, those are two very fundamental different things, okay? Yeah, but what if I do get, like... I'm sorry. I'm like, AD, get in that motherfucking gym. The real gag is this is a girl that's already religiously going to the gym. He is, but he's asked, but she asked him the question. So like, what do you, okay. Already perpetuating his fear of what she could be if she stopped this. And she's already a girl that goes to the gym. Like you got what you wanted and yet you're still going to let her know. Don't get too comfortable. Don't get too comfy. Like, don't let that slip. Cause I will tell you to get your ass back there. It was just a conversation, you know, like I, these people will take the oh man dude like why are you hooked on this so hard man it's just a conversation people have right and sometimes she's focusing a lot on what the guy is saying how do you like did you did she initiate the conversation like how do you know that this is like can you blame him for initiating the conversation i don't know now expeditiously just when i thought it couldn't get worse if but you were out of shape i would tell you that way though you you will be determined to go if i said it that way I think it's kind of mean, actually. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Because right. at some point, we're going to have children. Yeah, you got to get right. And I'm going to have a belly. Yeah. And, like, and I would be in the gym with you every day. Trust me. Get you right. And he was dead serious about that. This Okay, he might be a little bit wrong on that. What do you mean? Like, we got to get rid of this fucking baby belly, bro. I can't believe that you're gaining this weight. Oh, it's a child? Fuck you. You got to lose that shit. Get in the gym. Wear this girdle. What do you... No, nah, I mean, that's a little crazy. That's a little crazy. And this is not to say that if you are plus size, you're never going to be scrutinized by your man about your size. But I will say being plus size vets a lot of men out the way from the get. And it's such a weird way of defining that shit. So you're like what you're 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 telling me that you're OK with like demonizing, not demonizing, but like funneling out. Basically, you're funneling out all the dudes that don't like fat women. And you're thinking that's a good thing. You're going like I'm only dating the guys that like fat women. Okay, I mean, if that's the way you want to look at it, sure. But like, realistically speaking, what you're actually saying is that you're 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 taking out like I would say eighty to ninety percent of men, which most people in general are, don't want to date fat people for a variety of reasons. None of like all of which consists consists with weight problems, health problems, high blood pressure, all this shit, right? Or just not being attracted to people that are fat in general because it's unhealthy. You're basically taking that and you're going like, I'm just happy that I'm with guys that don't give a fuck about me. That's not good. That's not good. I mean, granted, this guy was a little bit assholeish about the way that he approached it. But, I mean, it's better than having a guy that's just going to go, no, you're good. You're perfect. Exactly. No, you don't need to lose weight. What are you talking about? Be fat. Be fucking big as shit. You're going to die in eight months? So what? Be big. It's not good. And it allows a lot of men to set expectations. But of course, you're going to have your few that'll be like, baby, do you ever want to like lose weight? You know? We've What's all wrong with that? What is, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Over there, I told y'all my stories. But this right here takes the cake. She said, I'm going to have a baby. No pun intended. Someday, and he said, yeah, I'm going to get, make sure you get back right. <laughs> this lady just risked her life to push out your kin. And you're talking about, I'm going to make sure you get back right? Okay. Do men deserve rights? Wait, what? Hold on, I'm sorry. I'm going to make sure you get back right? Do men deserve rights? What? I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I, I was truly too stunned to speak. My boyfriend also was too stunned to speak because... Huh? Oh, man, that's terrible, dude. That's that's not good. Like, he didn't necessarily say any... Okay, if he was saying that post-pregnancy, like, if your wife or, like, your girlfriend or whoever is pregnant, it's a pretty crazy statement to say, like, I'm gonna get you right while you're pregnant. That's fucking crazy. Like, what are you talking about? It's a fucking child. It's nothing to get right. But if you're talking about post-pregnancy, 
and like a lot of women want to get rid of the baby weight, right? A lot of women want do want to get rid of, rid of that baby weight. And I, I'm pretty sure this one would also be in the bracket of trying to get rid of the baby weight since she's like a gym addict or whatever, a gym rat. What's wrong with what he said? Like he's attracted to women that are not fat. Therefore, he's going to encourage you to not be fat. Like it's not necessarily a bad thing. He could have said it in a better way, sure. And if you're sitting here flexing at your flexing to your that your boyfriend didn't have a problem with that, ah, uh, I mean, you know, ah, uh, you know, I've been in situations where I didn't want to say anything either. But I'm gonna speak up and be like, well, I mean, he's not necessarily wrong. That's what you know. If he's in a relationship with somebody that doesn't want to be fat and he's trying to make sure that's something that he's that he has is not necessarily a bad thing. Again. Dating while being fat kind of weeds out a lot of the fat phobic men. No shit. No fucking shit. I fucking hope so. That's like somebody saying like dating while black weeds out all the white supremacists. Like I hope so. Like fucking duh. Already. <laughs> like you're you're weeding out a good good percent of that population. Not to say you're not going to get any, but I'm just so glad I found a person that values my mental health before anything. You're this just fucking dumb. It's just fucking dumb. You're stupid, dude. That is ungodly levels of dumb. You're happy you, you're with somebody that is focusing on your mental health but does not care about your physical health? That's not a good thing. If you're with somebody that never talks to you about health in physical sense and they're okay with you being fat or obese, that is not a good thing. That person is enabling you. They're literally sitting there never talking about the issues when they're issues. Your house is on fire and you're just sitting there going, this is okay, this is fine, is not good. If a man said that to me, I fear I would catch a case. God forbid I was actually with child. <laughs> I'm in the best, most beautiful relationship of my life. You say that, but like you just self-admitted that your dude doesn't give a fuck about you. And I have no worry that my weight plays a part in the affection that my boyfriend has for me. Terrible. Even at my heaviest, he shows me such great amount of love Terrible. that I don't worry that if I were to have his kids one day if it's like it's like being with somebody and they have a severe addiction and instead of telling them that 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 is a problem you just refuse to talk about it and you think that issue is not gonna continue to grow or get worse in some particular type of way why would you let me ask you a question right if you're with somebody and they have a drug addiction wouldn't it be appropriate to talk to them about the drug addiction? Wouldn't it be appropriate to talk to them about them about the crackhead? Like, oh, bro, you keep, you keep, you know, the crack that you do is really not good, right? Would you look at that as a bad thing? Like, if they have a crack addiction, you addressing the problem with them, is that a bad thing? Now, put that in the same scenario here. If your boyfriend or girlfriend is in, and you're gaining weight and they don't like it, like, they don't like you gaining weight, okay? Um, or even if they, they're okay with you gaining the weight, they should still have a problem with it because the, the overall effect of this weight gain is unhealthy, right? In the same way that doing drugs, sure, it gives you that, like, you feel good, but overall, it's not good for you, right? Depending on the drug, of course. But we're talking about hard drugs here. Why is it okay there, but it's not okay to talk about the, the problems here? Like, why, what is up with that? Like, I, I don't understand why these people will never look at it in the lens of why here, but not there. And why do you think it's a good thing? Because your boyfriend is never going to talk to you about the issues that actually have, that are issues. That's not a good thing. It's not. I would be insecure about my body. Or even if I didn't have kids, like say life just got hard. Say I, I got another sickness that made me gain weight. Like I don't have to worry that my body is going to impact my relationship. Because that, I'd rather be single my whole life. It's terrible. It's really bad. Okay, this might be super niche content, but if anyone else grew up fat, is this something that you can relate to or like, is it just me? So a couple of weeks ago, someone that I don't know very well did something really nice for me and thoughtful in a social setting. Like it was a really small thing. And I was like, oh, why would he do that? And the only way that my brain could rationalise it was like, oh, he must fancy me because why, why else would anyone do that? But at the same time, I knew that something in my logic wasn't making sense. And so I really thought about it. When I was thinking about it, I realised that I came to the conclusion that he must fancy me because straight men so often will just not give a fat woman the time of day to even be polite. Like, if you even... Today, I made eye contact with a man by accident because I just looked in his direction and he was like... Like, he looked away so quickly <laughs> because he didn't want me to get the wrong idea, I guess. I don't know. Maybe not. But, like, that happens to me a lot. You're talking about just being a dude. Like, being a guy in public and looking at a girl, You like, 99% of the times, it's, like, domestic violence or something. Or it's, like, I don't know, man. But I understand it to a certain degree. Like, obviously, women... That's so why I always tell women, like, to get guns. Like, guns just in case. You know, just in case. Buy a gun. You know, get a license. Buy a gun. Get a concealed carry permit. Whatever the fuck. Mace at the bare minimum. There's a lot of creepy-ass guys out here. But um, 
if you're telling me that you you're so fat that w when guys look at you they they look at you oh shit damn hold up oh fuck dude let me uh damn hold up that whew. like that's terrible that is not good information that i would be talking about man that sounds like some <laughs> That sounds like some depressing ass shit that would keep me up at night, every single night. Why don't you lose weight? Like, I, I get it in the sense of like, you shouldn't have to put up with it, but you can't control other people. And if this is something that's happening to you a lot, you need to lose weight. That is crazy. So basically I realized that like, I took an action that was like bare minimum polite as something much more- A lot of guys too will, she's looking at, okay, hold on, hear me out. A lot of guys think simply because a woman gives them any type of interaction that she wants to fellatio you. And that's like a factual statement for like most men. Most dudes have no boundaries. And I feel like once you start getting older, maybe once you start dating women, and some guys never break out of this mentality, they think that if a woman is simply friendly with them, that they want their penis in and around her mouth like all the time. It's just what it is. And I, I struggle with that a lot. Because as a woman, you have to like hyper manage your emotions and you have to hyper manage this other guy too, because she, he doesn't actually understand if you do or do not like him. And that's why I always tell women, like you have to be the one that ultimately decides who, who can be your friend. Cause he's never going to decide. He's going to, he's just going to be there forever and he's going to stay in your circle and he's going to be just like getting his soul taken away every single fucking day because you're with another guy or maybe you don't care for him in that particular type of way and he thinks that he does because you're leading him on but he you're not actually leading him on you're just friends with him so it's like you're being held emotionally hostage by this guy and he's never going to leave he's never going to leave you need to be the one ultimately that decides to not be friends with him and sometimes it can be very easy in the sense of like if this guy tells you hey i'm like I'd like you. I want to be your boyfriend. I want to be more than just this. I don't want to be just your friend anymore. And that that's a very easy, no, we can't talk anymore because this is never going to, this, this guy can't be your friend after that. Like never in my life have I been friends with a guy and he go, David, I just really want to just gob swallow your shit. Like I want to just milk you like a fucking horse. I want to suck that shit up. And uh, I never was in a scenario, I've never been in a scenario like that in general, but if I was in a scenario like that, I would not be friends with that person anymore because that had broken the boundaries of the friendship. That person was never your friend. That person just wants to have sex with you or be your boyfriend. It's, it's no longer a friendship. And too many times I see women still being friends with guys like that. And that's terrible. Like if a guy approaches you and tells you, I want to be more than friends, cut that guy out. That's crazy. He's not going to leave because he thinks that there's still a chance, which is not. So you need to be aware of yourself and you need to be aware of these guys. And sometimes it's very difficult because some guys are very ambiguous. Some guys you don't know and you have to test the waters to see where this guy stands. Some guys are genuine guys. I do believe that men and women can be friends, but sometimes men, um, they're not really your friends. They're just guys waiting for you to strike. More because I receive such a lack of respect from men because I'm fat. So I went on a date tonight. So I'm gonna tell y'all a little bit about it, I guess. Also, keep the new tattoo. Anyways, um, so I went on a date. It was our first date. I have hung. Why do you have just random tattoos across your body? What are these like Monopoly pieces? What What are you doing? I with him like twice before this. He planned the whole date, which is really nice and refreshing because that never happens to me. We decided to go to the drive-in movie theater um here in Houston, which is like right next to downtown. And if you have social anxiety or like date anxiety, I feel like this is the best place to go. You don't really have to interact with anybody else. I don't have to worry about getting recognized on the date. Oh my God, what's my teeth? Hold on. Why would you get recognized? Is she is she famous? Is this girl tall glass of Jess? Is she famous? I man, you know how many times I've heard TikTokers go like, oh my God, like stop. Like I think I'm gonna get I think I'm gonna get recognized in this movie theater because I'm like super famous on TikTok. And does that happen? Does that fucking happen, dude? Anyways, another plus about the drive-in movie theater, if you, you can, while you're watching the movie. Suck we stopped and got Dave's Hot Chicken, which I'd never had before, and honestly, it was pretty fucking good. It was so cute. He actually, like, looked up to see, like, what type of food they had, and he was like, let's just go get Dave's before we go to the movie, because they don't have, like, actual food there. Man's is actually, like, high-key applying pressure, and it's refreshing, because... I don't know. I haven't experienced this in a while. I've gotten this critique quite a bit when I'm when I'm in relationships is that I don't put enough effort into dates. And it's always for me, um, it's always like a, okay, today's Tuesday or today's Friday. Let's go here. And I don't really put thought into it. Like I'm not going, I'm not planning shit out because I'm not that type of person. And sure, 
I could put in more effort. But the thing is, like, because I am who I am, if I were to change at this point, it'd be like a, I don't know, a drastic change in the way that I am, right? But here's the thing. I think I do put in a lot of effort when it counts. Like, I am going out of my way to ensure that we can go places and do stuff because I know that's super important. If it was up to me, I wouldn't go anywhere. Like, I would just sit here and I know that you enjoy doing stuff. Not you particularly, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, I enjoy that. I know that you enjoy going places and doing stuff and interacting and still like, that's fine. I like doing this stuff too, to a certain degree. So I'm going like, okay, we'll go to the aquarium. Let's go here. Let's go to the museum. Let's do that. Let's do this. Right. But I've gotten critiques quite a bit of, I just wish there was more to it. Like, I wish that you were able to actually have plans week in, weeks in advance on how, what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. Like, what are we going to, and I'm just thinking like, like, I get it. I understand. But like, I do a lot, you know, I do a lot. I do sometimes, and I'm not trying to say that I'm, I'm like going above and beyond or anything like that, but I feel like sometimes I'm not recognized for what I bring and it's always more of like, I wish you could do more. I wish you could do more. And I personally think that I'm doing a lot, you know, and, um, I don't know, man, maybe I'm, I don't, I don't think I'm a people pleaser organically speaking, but, uh, dude, it's tough sometimes to be like, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. But then I think about it sometimes. I'm like, no, what the fuck? No, I do a fucking lot. What are you talking about? Right. I don't know. It is on the whim, though, for me. I'm, I, you know, I'm not really – maybe it's like two days in advance where it's like, oh, you want to go to the aquarium? All right, we'll go to the aquarium on Tuesday. But then sometimes you get there on Tuesday and it was closed and you're like, oh, I just forgot to Google it, you know? I don't want to get, like, too excited about it, but I just had to tell you. Quick story time. So I go on a date with this guy. I meet him on this dating app for big girls. It's called Woo Plus. Anyways, he is so fine. Like, doll – Model, by the way. This girl's a model. Did you know that? Man, where the fuck is my modeling contract, dude? Right? Can people just become models nowadays, dude? You know how many times? I remember, oof. Bro, I was like looking at this one girl the other day, right? And I looked at some of her pictures, right? This girl had a forehead that was probably bigger than Dwayne The Rock Johnson's forehead. And that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. If you have a big forehead, I've never met a dude. This woman right here, for instance, she has a very small forehead. I give her a lot of credit for the small forehead. But then again, there's not really much you can do about that. But I was looking at this girl and she looked like an alien in a few of her pictures but she was like a real deal model and i was just thinking about that i was like damn like i know that i got some features on me that are like not the not the best right like i got some weird kneecaps and stuff like that my ears are misshapen right like this ear and then this ear they're not shaped the same and i'm, I'm a little bit asymmetrical and things like that but oftentimes i see people nowadays that are like you're a model you know and i'm not saying this girl was questionably being a model but she had a very big forehead and I look at these people and I go like, how is Jordan Underwood a model, right? Like the model don't mean shit anymore. Model does, it really doesn't mean anything anymore. If people are just like, I'm a model, I'm a model, I'm a model. Really? That's crazy. Am I, can I be a model? Can I be a model too? Can I just say that I'm a model? All dark chocolate, chocolate bar fine. He's from Paris. He's a designer making six figures at least oh, i'm a model we go hand in hand right so he takes me out to this restaurant in tribeca lower east side of manhattan the steak comes out to perfection so delicious afterwards he takes me walking around the pier so i'm thinking okay we're gonna get snuggly and he can't stop talking about his ex okay <laughs> that totally ruined it for me i literally had to let him go he's off the roster he's booted off the roster is crazy bro how many other men you got on the roster? That's what I would want to know, dude. May not have worked this time, but I still have another date from Woo Plus. Let me know if you guys want to see part two. Yeah, she got another date. So she's got, she's hooking it up. Like, it's fine to have, it's fine to date around, I think. Like, it's it's okay to date around, like, to, to go on multiple dates with people. But when, when people say roster, <laughs> what does that mean? Like, to me, when I hear somebody go, I have a roster of people, I'm thinking, like, you have multiple people in your phone that you just hit up every once in a while to have sex with or people that you know you're using i don't like that i don't like it personally it's okay to date around but i don't roster is just a bad word Bye. For me. so i'm on dating apps right and um i guess somebody that swiped right on me i didn't swipe right on them um and they ended up dming me on instagram and sending you this hey i know this is the worst way to ask somebody out but you are really cute and appear to be chill and funny if you are free sometime this week or so, I would love to take you out on a cheesy date. I promise. I promise only the highest quality of awkward small talk. It's not a bad message. It's not. Like, of all the, you know, if, if this was like, hey, you know, my dick is kind of big, right? I got that fat, big, fucking Long John Silver shit. 
that would be bad. That's like the worst of the worst. This is like high end. This is a high end text message. He did double text though. Condense it. Put it in one message. Basically asking me on a date. Yeah, not bad. Um, this happened literally yesterday and it was a lot. So I needed to think about it. But I was like, okay, I'll get back to them when I have a moment. Is it a lot? Is this a lot? I don't think this is a lot. Do you not get hit up a lot? But then you'll never guess what I got in my email today. He did not email you. If he emailed you, that's a fucking creep, dude. Anybody that emails you, where do you even get your email? I literally got this person. Hi, Danielle. Daniela, I hope this email finds you well. I understand this is your business email, so I apologize in advance for this. You are re you really caught my eye, and I would love the opportunity to go out with you on a chill date. To keep the email somewhat professional, I have added a short resume to go over some of my qualifications and why I could be a good fit for a fun date. Please see the attachment below. Yeah, don't fucking... This guy is a fucking creep, dude. Uh, if this is... This is automatic red flag. If you're emailing me, what the fuck? First of all, dude, how'd you even get the email? If it's a business email, dude, get the fuck out of here. You're crazy, okay? This is some like Jeffrey Dahmer type of shit, okay? Don't do that. The last thing I want for you is to feel pestered. And if you, current, if you currently have a boyfriend or simply not interested for whatever reason, that's totally fine. And I wish you the best for that in that case. If... If after reading my over my resume and you would like to connect, please enter, please either respond to this email or my Instagram DM. This, this is a, don't do that. This, if you're a dude or a woman, don't, don't ever email somebody like this. It's fucking crazy. No, emails are off limits. They're not. Okay. No, never. Also sending an email. Um, I'll let you pause to read. And I love a person that wants and like puts in a lot of effort for something. This is not effort. This is creepy. Okay. He might be doing this shit. This is not effort. This is not. Don't conflate this with effort. This is creepiness. This guy is low fucking effort. This guy has no options. He is a creep. This is a creepy fucking statement, dude. Do not. Do not. So just saying. Um, but what was attached to this email is literally the best pick. thing that I've ever seen. Hold on. They attached a dating resume. Yeah, this guy don't, this, that's no, that's a no-go, bro. That's a fucking no-go, okay? Hold on. Personable date with experience in carrying conversations and bringing a good vibe. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. This is fucking, this is, if, if you, why? Why do you have a resume? How often do you do this? How, like, what, what this woman's failing to understand here is that because this guy has a quote unquote dating resume, that means he's practically put thought into this and he's thought about sending this to multiple women. So you're, it's like getting a dick pic from the same guy like that, that he sent to like 50 other women. It's not special. It's not special anymore. This is absolutely nothing. This is a nothing burger. He probably made this one day in Microsoft fucking Word or whatever the fuck. And then he just, he probably made this four years ago. And now you're, he's just sending it to you and you think it's cool. You think that he put in effort. He put in no effort. This is no effort at all. All this is, let's read it. Let's read it, okay? <laughs> T tenured in spontaneous adventures. Resilient. No, no one has ever asked me to cook for them twice, but that does not stop me from trying. Okay? Um, proactive problem solver quick to adapt to long lines uh, long lines at restaurants proud paddle board owner recently out for, of a long relationship trying to go on dates with fun people to see where things go okay girlfriend one vancouver bc june 2014 to uh, to november 2015 full time personal boyfriend to a girl during my first year of high school okay uh effectively supported and was responsible for awkward hand holding and random putting. Okay, listened effectively and used communication skills. It's like it's put together well. It is put together well. Exchange date with Australia 2016. Okay, maximize utilities on poor Italian average German skills. Okay, uh, most recent girlfriend. Still gonna have three years, three year relationship. Um. You would think he would have more stuff here on the three-year relationship than this one and this one. This is only a year, and this is only, like, this is less than a year, actually. So this is, like, three years, and he only has one thing here. Coordinate, coordinating the longest relationship I have ever sustained until internal and external factors put it to an end. 
it's creepy. It's creepy. Okay. It's creepy. If you think this girl right here, not seeing this as a red flag is a red flag. This girl has, I don't care if she's fat. I don't care who you are. If you have low standards and you, you think you can't get a man's is nope, not this guy, not this guy. This guy is going to eat you and not in a way that is romantic or sexual or anything like that. He's going to pull out a fork and knife and he's going to be, he's going to be worried about the seasonings. That's what he's going to be talking about. He's not going to be eating you and the way that you want to, he's going to be eating you in the way that you don't want to, unless you're into it, which most people I feel like are not. But anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. Let me know what you, down below what you guys think about this video. Um, if you watch the video in its entirety and you're here right now, leave it down below by typing, sorry, leave, let me know by uh, leaving a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. I'm almost 10,000 subscribers. So if you can help me get to 10,000 subscribers, I would truly appreciate it. I'll talk about the SERP like I did earlier and why I have it behind me. Um, if you want to become a member of my channel, you can, if you don't want to, that's fine too. Uh, if you watch the video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in creep. It's one of my favorite radio head songs. And I think most people really like that song either too. That's a pretty good song. I like it personally. It's a really good song. And I even like the covers that random other bands do. So it's a good song regardless, but one thing's for sure. You're not a creep. You're a fantastic, beautiful person that I know would not send somebody an email to try to get a date from them as if it's like some kind of, this is not romantic, right? If you were to hit somebody up and like 20 years after you guys got married and you were on the street and some random dude came up to you and he's trying to make a TikTok video and he said, hey, tell me where you guys met. And you go, oh, he emailed me. That guy would go, oh, ooh, really? He emailed you, huh? That's fucking weird, dude. Like, he was he your boss? No? Just some random guy on the internet, right? Mm, okay, that's fine. No, that's not fine. That's fucking weird, okay? I know you would never do that. I know that you have more dating experience than this, and I know that you are more put-together person than emailing somebody. I know that. I know that for a fact. And by the way, your skincare is looking great. I have to acknowledge it. It's great. It looks great. You've put in a lot of work, a lot of effort in hydration of your skin and the internal areas of your body through the realm of drinking water and h2o so good for you i appreciate that you amazing beautiful specimen of human being if i could give you this microfiber cloth right now that i have right here that's used to clean uh screens i would give this to you this is i would give this to you because it's you deserve it you deserve it and all its beauty and all this other stuff you beautiful specimen of humanity anyway we're getting a video here. If you want to check out my social medias, it'll be linked down below in the description. And the about section of my channel is just my Instagram, my Twitter, my Discord, and my second channel. If you don't watch any any uh, other content from me, you can go on that second channel. If you want to follow me on any of those other platforms, you can. I'll be linked in the description and the about section of this channel. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace!